This is so cool. Things must be real bad if they had the balls to call us in. Foster! Great. Now I know it's a disaster. Always a pleasure, Hank. What's the matter? Didn't want to spring for a sitter? You know damn well I don't have anyone to leave her with, thanks to this place. Let's save the fighting for the battlefield, shall we? Wow. Who's the guy in the armor? King T'Chaka of the African Kingdom of Wakanda. They don't typically involve themselves in global affairs, but... Aliens? Yes. Aliens. Your Highness, it's a pleasure. Your father was a great ally to us during the war. Yes, I understand you even donated some vibranium to your efforts. Yeah, we made a shield out of it. We lost it in the Arctic, but other than that, things turned out pretty well. Hey, how'd the commies snag an invite? Gorbachev wanted the target contained before he reaches Moscow, so he sent the Winter Soldier, the world's most deadly assassin. Hey, panelers, welcome back to the show. I'm Mark. And I'm Sydney. And, well, this is out on New Year's Day, so I want to wish everybody a Happy New Year's. I hope everybody had a great holidays. Uh, We haven't been on in a while. We haven't put out a podcast in a while since uh, the last one, so I'm glad that uh, we're back now. We're going to be covering this, and obviously, as you see on your the images on Facebook and all the other promotion that we're doing for this as it comes out on the podcast, we are covering What If Season 2, like we've been wanting to for a long time. It's been a long wait. It's been, I factor in, about two years since uh, What If initially came out, and uh, it's been uh, a fun ride with everything that's going on with Marvel. We'll get into news later, too, regarding certain things that have have come up on Marvel. But for now, we're just going to do, uh, like I said, we're covering season two of What If, and we're covering two episodes per podcast. So keep that in mind. I know the show started out over a week ago, and it's literally wrapped up the day that we're covering this. So we're doing this on December 30th, but uh, yeah... Being a person who works normally and podcasting <laughs> at the same time is very, very hard to do. And I know there are people out there who are able to do it on a daily basis and get you the content that you want. So today I'm joined by Sydney. Hello. And welcome, Sydney. Thanks. So we're doing two episodes per podcast. So this is going to be a spoiler full. So obviously it's been out for a while. Uh, if you haven't watched the episodes, please go back, watch them, come back and listen to us. Uh, if you like to be spoiled, hang around. If you like, uh, we'll, we'll get into our discussions. Maybe it'll change your mind for watching it if you didn't want to watch it. So with that, we're going to move right along and we're going to go right into What If Season 2, Episode 1, What If Nebula Joined the Nova Corps. So Sydney... I always put in a synopsis, so can you read that one small synopsis for me? Sure, nice and quick. When Nebula is recruited to join the Nova Corps, she sets out to prove her detective skills. Yep, very simple, very straight to the point. A lot of uh, Disney Pluses and Marvel Disney's uh, short but distinct synopses that are out there. Yeah, I take it directly from the, the, the episode as I'm watching it. Okay. And it's hilarious that they do these short but sweet ones. And it's nice. It, it's not convoluted. It's not too much. But with that, what were your initial thoughts of the episode itself? Um, So I liked it okay. But honestly, <laughs> it's not my favorite. I feel like the season is kind of picking up episode by episode. Mm-hmm. I think that this particular episode is not exactly my genre. Um, <laughs> in a way, it's kind of too realistic. I think I would have rather more like sci-fi, more fantasy, but um, no, it yeah. was good. It had really strong points too. Yeah, I felt the same way. Uh, you have to realize too, they actually filmed and did a lot of these like at the tail end of when they were doing season one. And I think this was a holdover kind of story or episode that they were going to do. And then when they finally put this out, 
it was to me it wasn't a strong introduction into the new season and like you said it's not your cup of tea of like it's pretty much when you watch the episode i loved blade runner in the theaters but that's literally what this uh episode is it's it's marvel's idea of hey let's put a character here and put this in this storyline i love blade runner as a movie alone with harrison ford but literally that's what we're getting out of this Mm -hmm. It's a Blade Runner-esque kind of episode with Nebula in the detective's chair. Right, which is not a choice that I support because to me, Nebula (laughs) is comic relief. I mean, she's ridiculous. I mean, she's a very sad character. She's been abused by her father and we do touch on that here. But I mean, she's ridiculous most of the time. And um, I just didn't want to see her walking around being so morose. (laughs) <laughs> it's it's literally taking straight from uh, the Decker kind of character from Blade Runner. And I see what they're doing. They're trying to give uh, the characters a little bit more depth uh, with this. And what if is literally the wit- what they did in the comics and comparison uh, to the show, it's the same. They literally take the character out of what they normally would do and then change that character. They uh, They give it a bit of a twist. Now, the funny thing is, too, within the What If series in the comics, it became canon in comic lore if you watched it, uh, if you read any of those comics. They literally made it part of the Marvel uh, universe. So some of those story arcs from What If became major players in uh, the regular comic run. What Marvel is doing, and I see it a lot now, I've watched ahead, everybody. Yeah, sorry. Mm, Me too. I'll try not to spoil too much. But I'm not going to spoil anything because these are pretty much episodically, so they're they're not part of a whole story completely, Yet. if you think about it. At least not these two early episodes, so we can kind of manage to not discuss the arc that this season is trying to Correct. give us. Yeah, yeah. They did that with season one with The Watcher and uh, everything else that was going on with that and with Strange and all these events that were going on, especially with Ultron and everything else that was going on in season one. What they did with these key specific episodes for this season, it seems, is they're doing an ode to the movies we love, Mm -hmm. which is very similar to what DC had done with their comic run with uh, in the New 52 in DC Comics. So what they did was literally take the cover page of each of the comics that came out of different, like, you know, Superman, Batman, everything. And they put it in a motif of a movie, but they didn't put that in a comic as, like, the story. But I just like, uh, I love those because they did, like, Westworld and uh, mm. a couple other films that they did the the comic cover of. But with this, they, they with this one, they did Blade Runner uh, and another coming one. I'm not going to say what it is, but it's oh, completely... Yeah. It's Die Hard. <laughs> it's Die Hard. Spoiler. Yeah. yeah, spoilers. Die Hard. With me, I was not too thrilled about the episode. Mm-hmm. I, I watched it. I was entertained, but it's not something that lives in my mind or it's not water cooler talk for sure. me at work. <laughs> I'm glad uh, that you feel that way, too, because yeah. coming off of, um, you know, recording and watching the most recent season of Loki. It's a show I love. And I think that that's one thing that my podcast hosts and our listeners love is that we're people who are really passionate and appreciate like all of the moments. But now I'm podcasting on something that I well, this particular episode, I I think this what if season is is getting really strong. But um, this is kind of the first time I've really brought to a recording me saying, No, I think they really missed the mark in a couple of places. Plot, motivation, and then for me, genre, although I think they did a good job of being true to what that genre requires. Yeah, it, it, it'll it captivate a certain audience, like with certain stories, I think. And for some people, it'd be like, well, that's not my cup of tea. Well, somebody else would be like, I love this. Mm-hmm. It's like going to a movie and then the person next to you is like, I hate this movie. Yeah. <laughs> and then you're like, I loved it. Yep. And the other person looks at you going, what is wrong with you? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but with the, in this case, you know, we, you know, I like the fact that Nebula was dedicated to be like a true detective. She was given a path and a reason after Gamora was killed by Ronan. So she found a reason for and a purpose for her life. 
she chose basically to stand with Xandar. And uh, I thought it, this was interesting and clever way of making something new and different to Nebula, maybe, within uh, the known MCU that we got from her. It, it full, uh, Literally, this story revolves around Yandu's murder. Mm-hmm. Or it starts off at that point, which kind of leads to her further investigation. And obviously, like you said, Sydney, it's a different nebula, in my opinion. I, it, <laughs> I, I did you like the narrative within the show uh, by Nebula herself? How she's doing that first person detective talk oh. as she's going through the story. Oh, no, this thought, is where we found. I think him. it was probably a little, <laughs> a little dry, you know, and there was yeah. just a little bit monotone, and uh, I was kind of bored with that. Was there anything that you liked about within the episode that uh, caught your attention to sure. me? I loved, yeah. I, I, I honestly love the fact that we got how, more Howard the Duck. Exactly. The whole comic <laughs> relief of that team. I mean, they were hilarious. Remember when they just kind of stood there to look cool? We had Korg <laughs> and and I don't, who else was in that group? Um, uh, it was just uh, from my remembering, it was Howard, Korg, and there was somebody else. I'm Groot forgetting. was there. Oh, that's right. <laughs> uh-huh. Without Rocket. So, I mean, I have more questions than I do answers about this episode. Um, I want to go back and talk about, like, the questions mm-hmm. I have about how Nebula got to where she is, because those are major plot issues for me. But, yeah, no, the comic yeah. relief of, like, Groot and Howard and Quark. And then there's, like, another guy who is a character I'm not familiar with. He kind of didn't seem to have much of a head. And he kind of, like, was the one who was chopping the fish, and he was maybe a bartender. Any clue who that guy was? Okay, well, I don't recall. I've only watched the episode twice, unfortunately, mm-hmm. and I just was not really I, like it. Like you said, it, we were kind of taken out of it because it wasn't our thing. <laughs> and I just I looked at it. I was like, OK, and I watched it again and it let things fly. Uh, I, the only thing that appealed to me was like basically uh, Korg being Korg. He he didn't Great. do still his typical Taika Waititi himself. Uh, we got Howard. With Howard, the only thing I have notated with him was the fact that we got his quack in it. We never got that in the movies or hmm. anything. He didn't go quack oh, like oh, a real I don't even duck. know if I caught him doing that in the episode. He did it a couple of times and I noticed it. And I was like, wow, they're actually trying to make it a little bit. It's a little bit of a different, but I love the fact that they make him kind of like a mobster and everything. Oh, yeah. Girls hanging on him. He runs a casino. It's kind of like a speakeasy. I thought that was a cool twist. I actually Mm -hmm. thought that twist kind of contradicted Nova Prime's issue with her city. Her city Mm -hmm. was, you know, kind of devolving to crime. She said everyone was kind of going off the deep end because they were separated from the universe by their shield. But then here's Howard with the probably the dirtiest crime syndicate on Xandar. And it was pretty, pretty clean. It was like the least offensive casino I could imagine him running. So I don't know. (laughs) Exactly. Uh, I, I love the fact that uh, at the very end, it boils down the truth that Xandar is going to break out Ronin to take over the universe. Literally. That's what the whole uh, story and plot is. Yeah. If they open up the shield, then the people of Xandar will be happier and less criminal. And Ronan would allow Nova Prime to continue running the city. But there was a scene (laughs) on my second watch that I thought clarified her intention because Nova Prime's intentions are, are ridiculous. Ronan will kill everybody. And I didn't really see indication that her town was devolving, her planet was devolving into criminal behavior. But there's a scene where Nebula is walking through the streets of Xandar and there are all of these protests and the protesters are saying, you know, free us, free Xandar, something like that. So actually, I think what the issue is, is that the people of Xandar are tired of Nova Prime's rule, not sure what she's doing wrong. And the only way she's going to be able to maintain control is to allow even stronger dictator to come in and restore her power. But Ronan's not going to do that. Ronan's going to kill all of them. The only thing Ronan has ever wanted in the history of the MCU 
is to kill the Xandarians. And so that's that's what's next for them. Well, and never mind. Yeah. Ronan, Ronan was killed, so <laughs> I guess he's no longer <laughs> that threat. <laughs> My bad. <laughs> yeah, it, it, it's the it really took me out of it. The story itself. Now, normally, if you listen to me uh, and when we cover these episodes, that's why I'm glad I'm doing two at a time because it, like, it's either hit or mess with certain mo- episodes. I'm glad that at least on the second one, I really did enjoy it. But yeah, it's, it's weird. That the, the one key thing that I was a good takeaway from it that I liked is like the, the group where you see Nebula with Howard, Korg, and, and everybody else. They have to deal with the... Uh, like as a team, we get to see her with uh, Yandu's small hawk, which mm-hmm. I enjoyed, and using his uh, little spear that she, you know, he used to whistle and use as a weapon. And uh, yeah, and the fact that we also get Jude Law as Yan uh, Yan Rog from Captain Marvel too. That one was a weird placement for me for two reasons. One is you know, I thought that what if was pretty good in season one on changing maybe one plot point and seeing how that, you know, rippled through and affected the rest of the universe. And so maybe if I think very hard, I could figure out why Ronan taking, um, defeating Thanos could Mm. maybe end up with Jan Rog in prison on Xandar. But that was a stretch for me because he'd never been in prison there before. But then also Nebula making a decision that, he is the only person she can turn to for help with accessing the shield, you know, database or whatever. I mean, he wants like Ronan only to destroy Xandar. So of course he's going to backstab her, but then we find out that she was cool with that. So it got a little muddled in 30 minutes for that many twists. Hmm. I don't know if that worked. (laughs) Yeah, it didn't work for me. (laughs) (laughs) This is one of those that you could just bypass everybody if you don't like what you're hearing or if you did, you, it doesn't appeal to you. A lot of people would like it. Uh, a lot of people like to see those characters in those in, in that in that world or in that way in that kind of story. It's worth like it I said, for Korg. I think just watching the episode for Korg because sorry, spoiler, we're gonna see Korg again this season. I won't say anything else about it, but it's kind yeah. of fun to have him coming back with this comedy. I mean, he's really strong. And I will not argue the point <laughs> that I typically I would. Okay, so Korg is the individual in this episode who reads the sh- realizes that the shield codes are on the you know, Yondu arrow jump drive. And um, he, he's not the <laughs> smartest guy, right? Like, since when can he do that? But that was hilarious. And I will forgive um, that that's not in line with his character. It was it was funny. Well, it's funny, too, because usually that's the uh, comic relief pointing out the obvious, mm-hmm. <laughs> if you mm-hmm. think about it. So it's nice when they do stuff like that in, in certain storytelling out there. I think one other reason to watch this episode, if you really like did start debating whether or not you wanted to, is because it's sort of fun to debate with people, with yourself, whether or not you think that Ronan could ever defeat Thanos. And I felt so strongly on the side of Ronan could not. Um, But that's how this episode starts out. Ronan took power. And I want to ask you, Kirk, like, Mark, (laughs) damn it. I podcast with Kirk a bunch. I know. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, and your last name is Kirkman. I just just to yeah, challenge me exactly. further. <laughs> right. So, Mark Kirk. Um, Mark, uh mm-hmm. like, do you think that when Ronan took like defeated Thanos, he did that with or without the power stone? Because this whole setup is coming straight out of Guardians of the Galaxy One, where Correct. Ronan was supposed to obtain the power stone, which is the orb. And that's from Xandar, give it to Thanos. Thanos was then going to like in repayment destroy Xandar for Mm -hmm. just because Ronan's like a jerk and wants to kill everybody there. Um, Mm -hmm. So in this case, I have to imagine that Ronan beat Thanos without that power stone, which A, is completely impossible. Ronan's not strong enough to defeat him without an infinity stone. But the reason I say that Ronan never got that Infinity Stone is because we see him attacking Xandar twice. Once before they put the shield up in like the historical 
backflash. And then mm-hmm. two, when they open the shield. And at none of those points did Ronan do anything other than attack like militarily without, you know, he if he had had a stone, this would have gone a lot quicker. They would have never been able to develop shield technology and get that in place. So, yeah, yeah, I agree. Yeah, I agree completely for the fact that the only time we saw him with full power like that was when he had the power stone in his mighty hammer that Mm -hmm. we've seen before, not just with Ronan, but also uh, the the woman, the uh, the Kree woman from uh, the Marvels. (laughs) and the marvels. <laughs> she didn't have that stone though, did she? she no, just had she didn't purple. have a stone. She just had that purple hammer. and she had the hammer. Mm-hmm. That's it. it. I I call it the female Ronan. Yeah. <laughs> That's what yep. I always looked at it at her as. But no, I I it's kind of hard to believe. I don't believe it that he would be able to kill Thanos in any way. Mm-mm. And you know, cuz Thanos himself was a lot stronger, a lot bigger. I don't believe that. So, but yeah, it's, there's some things that, yeah, I guess you got to suspend your disbelief at times because it is another mm. story. But, you know, to me, I, I, after finish watching it twice, I'm like, am I going to watch this again? Probably not. I'll probably go to my best of, of season two, in my opinion. Exactly. It gets way better. Yeah. So with that, I'll move on uh, to, well, the only thing I got is one quote. <laughs> and that would be. The rock, paper, scissors with Korg, Meep, <laughs> and Howard the Duck. Uh, I think you were talking about Meep, the thing that was cutting oh, the yeah, things. Oh, yeah, Meep. Thank you. Yeah, there you go. I I had to write the name, so I, I just had it notated. But he goes, uh, they're playing rock, paper, scissors, and, of course, Korg plays. He goes, paper, because it's made of rock. <laughs> Different now. <laughs> I was like, okay. <laughs> I thought it was cute. Yep. But, he was cute. uh that that was all I got out of that, so I think uh, yeah we pretty much covered the the episode as it was or what we thought. But you tell us what you think, everybody. You let us know what you, your thoughts are on the <laughs> on the episode because a lot of people out there are are different. Everybody has good f- points, and if you want to, like I said, feedback is the best way. So let us know. Obviously, we didn't get much of anything because we didn't get anything because I did post this a while ago and I didn't do a follow up. So sorry there. But you have time still because we're going to be covering the rest of the season. So with that, we'll move right into what if season two, episode two. What if Peter Quill attacked Earth's mightiest heroes? So this is an interesting one. We got an all star cast in this. A lot of voices that we all know of. And uh, definitely characters that came back. So I'm glad that we, we're we covering this one right after <laughs> episode one. So, uh, Cindy, the synopsis on this one? When Ego and a young Peter Quill threaten Earth in 1988, Howard Stark and Peggy Carter form a team. Yep. Pretty much in a nutshell, another Avengers team. <laughs> yeah. New, their Which version of me. an Avengers team. Mm-hmm. Which is pretty cool. And I really did enjoy it. What were your thoughts on this one? Now, obviously, they're going to be completely different than <laughs> what the first episode was. For sure. Okay, so I loved it. I want, though, you piqued my curiosity. I don't have a list of the voice actors, but you just said a lot of people return. Can you tell me a little bit about that? Like, so who was, we had Ego back. He was voicing his character. Peggy Carter Kurt was Russell. voicing. Okay. Kurt Russell, Haley Atwell. Hank Pym was Michael Douglas. Okay. Obviously, <laughs> we don't have uh, Chris Pratt as Peter Quill because he's a kid. <laughs> I know. That's why I, I, I was like, is, is it him? <laughs> no, 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 no. What about Thor? But Thor was Chris Hemsworth. Good, 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 good. So it's nice when they actually get them back to do their voices for the characters that they portray. And I really do enjoy that. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I just love the character. Uh, the The team itself is completely different. So, obviously, listeners, we said spoilers. So, it's an Avengers team. But this is a completely different team. We have Ant-Man. We also get Goliath, which is, I believe, I didn't really look into it, if it was Lawrence Fishburne's voice. Actually, yeah. I remember seeing that on, like, okay, an internet thing. So, so, yeah, he was him. 
So, yeah, Lawrence Fishburne reprised his voice as uh, the other Doctor. That's why Hank and Goliath are <laughs> at odds. So, and then we, uh, it wasn't Annette Benning who played um, Marv L, who is also known as Wendy Lawson. Mm hmm. And that uh, a lot of people who didn't watch Captain Marvel will not remember, will not know that. They will not remember that. I, as, of course, all you comic book readers that are out there that were unhappy with it, I didn't mind it. I didn't mind that there was a woman portraying Marvel, and uh, a lot of guys out there are like, "I'm like, all right, well, that's your thoughts." <laughs> but I, I, I love the fact that they gave her. She didn't have the power of Marvel, but she was very intelligent. She was command presence and pretty much like a, a typical Kree soldier. Mm -hmm. So we, we get that, and I do that. Oh, there's also uh, Sebastian Stan as a Winter Soldier. I forgot about that. <laughs> oh, yeah. He's made a lot of appearances in these two seasons. Yeah. And I, I love Haley Atwell in it, too, for as playing Captain Carter. Mm -hmm. So it's another version of Captain Carter. Later on, we get a really different version of Captain Carter, which I saw yesterday morning before I went to work, and I was like, wow, <laughs> what they did in... <laughs> hey, wait, let's back up. This Haley Atwell isn't playing Captain Carter in this one. She's playing Agent Carter, right? She's not superheroed. Super Correct. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. She's just regular Agent Carter. So she's part of the whole government. The whole thing. Government. Mm -hmm. Obviously, we, you know, between that, uh, the cast and crew, we got Hank Pym as Ant Man, Foster as Goliath, Haley Atwell, who, who is coming back as Agent Carter. We got Howard Stark, so that wasn't the original voice actor of uh, Howard Stark, from my understanding, but it was the same one that pl portrayed him in, I think, uh, another animated version. Oh, it's not the guy from um, Mad Men? It might be. I'm yeah, not I think sure. it's him. I think he's, and he's played Howard Stark in the movies. I think it's the same guy. He's um, the older oh, with white we, hair. I wish yeah. I could remember his name. Great. I know. <laughs> uh, we got uh, the original Black Panther, not um, – oh, I'm forgetting. T'Chaka. Yeah, it's yeah, it's T'Chaka uh, and uh, not the sun. So – and then obviously we got – they pulled out the Winter Soldier of all things. Yeah. So I, I was really surprised about that one. So they needed some sort of version of a Captain America. But in this case, let's, let's get an assassin. <laughs> 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 so, uh, yeah, initially, I, I when I first saw, like, the coming attractions, this is one of the, the ones, because they had a trailer where they had it all filled in, and I really, really enjoyed it. After reading the synopsis, I was hooked. I was like, I know that. This is really cool. This is going to be an original one. I liked that it was set in the 80s. I think that that was really cool. I think it's cool to think back that there wasn't an Avengers team kind of at that point. So they've had to make one, you know, we had Hank Pym, but I'm not sure who else was out there doing stuff at that point, because a lot of these characters were very separate. You know, T'Chaka was isolated in Wakanda, like on purpose. And the um, mm -hmm. winter soldier was, you know, like a death machine in the Soviet union. Uh, mm -hmm. But yeah, bringing them together for the first time. I, I thought that was really cool. I really, really liked that we had two kids in this. I, I thought that the yeah. interaction between them was, was just wonderful. I really appreciated seeing Peter Quill, who is one of my very favorite characters in the MCU. I love star Lord so much. I love the guardians, but um, yeah. seeing him as a kid was, was awesome. I mean, he was really cute. Like he was out there <laughs> destroying stuff, stuff with his cosmic radiation, but then he really wanted the stuffed animal at the like carnival. So he destroys everything, but he like, telekinetically brings this one stuffed animal to him and then he like carries it around like rides rides with it or something but um, yeah. <laughs> that's sweet because I have a kid about that age you know my son is about that age so really sweet and then seeing him interacting with Hope um, I don't always love Hope I love Lost but I don't actually love Evangeline Lilly like she's just not an actress I'm 
I just, you're not a huge she, fan. I'm not a huge fan of her. Um, okay. So as far as Wasp, like I've never been a huge fan, but I liked the kid version of her. I thought Hope was really cute. I really enjoyed the whole Walkman thing. Of course, like I'm their age, so I had Walkman <laughs> at their age. Uh, I would have definitely shared it with my little friends. Sweet stuff. Yeah, it was it was a sweet story. I don't. It's funny too because you would think of it more as like a. Oh, they're gonna fall in love as kids, and no, it's not really like they're that. Like brother in any and way. sister now, because I think yeah. that Hank has adopted Peter um, at, at the end the of this, end. which I guess he's not gonna be Star Lord like at all. Uh, no, nope, he's still nope. gonna be power. Wait, so if if his dad ego dies, like does mm-hmm. he? But he goes not dead at the end either. So is Peter still very powerful? He's still like a celestial. Nope. No. Okay. No, I no. forget what happened. Just just like in the original uh, Guardians of the Galaxy 2 when mm-hmm. Ego died, the power that Peter had acquired by being around his father and have, he had that same power for the fact that he was in contact with him, he doesn't have that anymore. Mm-hmm. So, so it's the same thing. He's just a regular guy. So, Well, I think we have to ask whether or not – I mean, I know I just talked circles around it, but I was trying to figure that piece out. Ego, Mm -hmm. I don't even think is dead at the end of this because there's some sentence. I don't know if it was Nick Fury. Actually, Nick Fury wasn't in this. I think I wrote down I thought he should be in this. But um, they said that they destroyed his celestial body. No, his corporal body. But that they needed to go through the universe and destroy his celestial body. So there's more... Like storyline, oh, I guess that so follows he's still this? around. That's he's still around because I, he still yeah. has his seedlings all over the place. Yeah, so he I, still yeah. could grow. All right, so basically the threat wasn't completely gone. Right. So it's a possibility that uh, that Peter could still have the powers from his father, who is ego. Yeah, they so say they could that easily- the ego planet is still there. They have to go destroy it, and so I think that's why at the end, you know, Hank Pym says. We're kind of a team here, and that, that's their next mission is to go there and do it, which I guess is pretty good that they've got Marvel because I think at this point in time, none of the Avengers, S.H.I.E.L.D., whatever, have much of a space presence. Um, yeah. So it's good they got her. Yeah, they got uh, Marvel, who is Wendy Lawson, but she ha- she doesn't have the power, but she has the, the equipment. Why, why doesn't she have the power? I didn't realize that. What, what's going on with her? You have to realize the power came from the power stone or whatever stone. I forget which uh, infinity stone that blew up in front of uh, Carol Danvers. That did never happen to okay. uh, Wendy Lawson. Gotcha. So we never got like a whole backstory of how she got involved with the group and crew. If you look at her, she doesn't have any superpowers in I any didn't real way. That. I guess she was just driving a jet around. Correct. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So okay. she was a Kree soldier. That was it, <laughs> in, in my opinion. It. Yeah. That, that from what I got at it. And I really liked that. So they kind of normalized it. Because if you look at the original lineup of the Avengers, Widow didn't have superpowers. Right. Neither did Hawkeye. Hawkeye sure. had just, per, you know. So you had two people on the crew that didn't really have any powers. Ant-Man was pretty much your Iron Man in this one. Mm-hmm. Uh, Goliath was literally the Hulk. Mm-hmm. of the crew yeah and, fair. and then uh winter soldier was more of like the captain america yeah so there, there's like a kind of a positioning of how they did it with the the avengers point of view if you look at it that way i i liked it and i really did enjoy it like i said i just like getting those familiar voices and them working together and like you said the 80s thing the music is in there too. It's like reflective of the era, and okay, I just I love didn't that. know the song that she was playing on her um, Walkman, and I didn't know if that's because I just like have that missing piece of information from the eighties. I missed that song, or if it was an original piece for this. Do you know it? I've heard the song before, okay, and I know it's from the eighties, but it was I poppy. Don't... It was catchy. Like yeah. maybe I'll get Spotify to play it for me later. Yeah, I remembered hearing it before, so it uh, it. Oddly enough, I had like the I had my Spotify on yesterday for an '80s mix, mm-hmm. and there was a song on there, and I'm like, I don't remember this yeah. song at all. Why uh, is this on here? Just high during the <laughs> '80s, you miss things, you know. I'm no, just kidding. <laughs> I, was, I wasn't high at all. That was one thing, but I was never into um, 
popular music at that time too. I didn't really listen to everything that was on the radio. I was like typical metalhead back in that day and had long hair. Yeah. But not not in the middle eighties, but by the end towards the nineties I had had hair and long hair. But uh, <laughs> I kind of look like the Winter Soldier with his hair. That's awesome because uh, he looks great <laughs> in all of these episodes. I asked, um, I asked my co-hosts from Loki. I was like, "Does it make me a pervert to like the Winter Bad Soldier guy? cartoon?" And they're like, "No, it's okay. You're allowed to think a cartoon's hot." I was like, "Thanks." Well, actually, yeah. If you think about it, uh, the. Uh, the, the animated version of the Winter Soldier, I think, is better. And this is not a snap, uh, a smack to the head to uh, Sebastian Stan. I really do like Sebastian mm-hmm. Stan. He's a handsome dude. Mm-hmm. But he, I'm like, I do like the look on this one. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think hair in real life can look as good as his hair in, in, this, in this show. And then he's like super, he's super buff. I liked his storyline in this, um, just to get off of us, like, you know, going on about how hot he is but um <laughs> he, he always needs to be like revived from his brainwashing from the soviets yes. and so i like that you know it seems so difficult because he's so deep inside you know like maybe there's a trace of good guy it takes a lot of effort on like the part of the characters that surround him but they they typically break through so they did that kind of broke him of his assassin um mentality yeah and i like that there's a flurkin in the episode there's a flurkin i a forgot flirkin. about the so oh, marvel or wendy i guess i'm supposed to call her wendy because of the lack of powers but she gives a cat to hope and peter when they're like oh, sitting really? on the ground at that like christmas dinner i think they're kind of having at the end and um like goose is orange and this was an orange cat like why would she be giving anyone a cat if unless it was like goose yeah. or a flurkin yeah, like this one. Yeah, cute. So this was the uh, yeah. What I'm showing Sydney is they have the popcorn bucket holder and the sippy drink. Oh. The sippy drink is uh, literally goose. Is on what, this where did one. you get that? They sold them at uh, AMC no for way. when they, the movie The Marvels was out. So I went and got them. Now, mind you, the movie didn't do so well in the theaters. Uh, we did cover it here on Panels of Pixels podcast. Everybody, if you listen to it, we didn't give it a great review. All we stated, me and Rob and myself, uh, we stated that it was entertaining, but we had a lot of issues with the story plot, uh, continuity, a lot of stuff with the scrolls. But yeah, they they sold these like uh, containers, like the it looks like the egg that the Flurkins came in. Ah, uh, yeah, okay, uh huh. And right. that's that's the popcorn holder, and then <clears throat> the cat. You undo the top of the head of all things, not not to mm-hmm. be morbid, but you put it. It holds a drink. So uh, I mean, I'm jealous. They didn't sell that at my movie theater. They, they cool. sell them online, and this is not a plug for uh, AMC or for all the collectibles out there, but they, <laughs> if you do search it, it's unfortunately $50 online. They still have them in stock, but mm. if you go to the theater like I did, you get it for 20 bucks, <laughs> and they still had them hanging around, so if there's a possibility, go out and get one yourself, but 50 bucks online directly from AMC, which is a bit pricey in my opinion yeah i think so for a popcorn bucket but it was cute yeah I, it's cute i liked yeah, the models they... okay i i thought it was i thought it was a happy little movie to watch over thanksgiving break with family and um unlike episode one of what if this season which was way too complicated <laughs> for 30 minutes at least they just like went through the plot of the marvels in a straightforward fashion and i wasn't left wondering at any point so those were yeah, those were the upsides yeah. for me well that that's what i like the fact is that you could actually follow the marvels and it was very entertaining in comparison to that movie and to, to the first episode of what if <laughs> i would say yeah i prefer the marvel so the first episode of what if in my opinion yep, yep. <laughs> i'm so sorry disney <laughs> sorry marvel didn't mean to say it but i did uh we don't get any screeners or anything from them so it's okay yeah <laughs> Uh, I really did like the, uh, like you said, uh, the connection between Hope and Peter. Uh, at the very end, they're pretty much like brother and sister. Uh, Peter feels welcomed into a family. We get a little bit more of Howard. There's a lot of uh, comparison of Howard to uh, 
but Tony as well, if you think about it. Kind of leading the Avengers? Like, what are you like, saying? Well, he seems more of a, a peppy, a happy-go-lucky kind of guy mm-hmm. in comparison to the Howard Stark we always know as being so strict and stern. Yeah. You yeah. know? Wait, yeah, where was Tony in all of this? Tony's a kid. I know, but we had kids in this. I guess he was just at home. Yeah. Well, Howard right. mentions him. He does. How, okay. Yeah. He checking. goes, my son. He d- he refers to his son and and how how he oh, the is. Absent too. father thing. Like I get enough from my of that from my son back home. Is that this episode? Correct. Cool. And that's the the actually uh, the caveats to how Tony refers to his father as well. Mm-hmm. Throughout the whole series, the whole yeah. uh, MCU run. Yeah, he mentions so. it, I think, again, in this What If series, too, something about his dad. Yeah. The Battle of Ego is great, uh, as he was, like, part of the Earth and coming mm-hmm. out during that whole battle scene. It's, yeah. like, literally him as dirt, and they're just taking him out. I just love that whole scene. Like, infinite little dirt versions of him, and then Thor, I was like, you know, you see the lightning, and you don't know Thor's coming, <laughs> and I love Thor. So, there's lightning, and I'm like, is, is it, is it, is it, is it Thor? And then Thor comes down, and then he, you know, does the whole thing that he kind of does in Ragnarok, where he, like, uses Mjolnir to, like, just clear swaths of baddies. And um, he took out, you know, just so many at a time. So I thought that was exciting. <laughs> yeah. Uh, he becomes, like, the, uh, the definitely the god badass he's supposed to be. Mm-hmm. Not the god goofball we've goofball. gotten within the past two movies. Sure. Love and Thunder, it was a, a little bit overkill with the, the comedy, in my opinion. But uh, Ragnarok was a, a good separation Mix. from the uh, the previous uh, Thor movies that we had before. R- Ragnarok is fantastic, and he's funny, and he's powerful there, so strong yeah, but with, Yeah, yeah, with Love and Thunder. I'm not saying I hated Love and Thunder. I, I had fun with it because of the comedy in it and how Taika Waititi is and how he does his films, but definitely a com- different in comparison to like the dark world. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and the first door. And I love it. I actually liked, I really love dark world. I know people didn't love it. I did not like love and thunder to see it a second time. So when people kind of <laughs> talk to me about the plot, I'm like, I don't really know what happened in that movie. <laughs> uh, it's, it's kind of strange, but, I have a little bit of a love for it, for uh, a lot of the characters in it. Mm. Uh, I just love the fact that, you know, it's like Thor comes in and he's more the serious type. Mm-hmm. And then he uh, he's told by, uh, I, I believe, Odin or whoever is that you have to kill the kid. Literally, it's like oh, he's, right. he's there to kill the kid. So Odin and would then, say uh, that. Well, because the kid had destroyed Jotunheim and... And Asgard, right? Is Asgard completely gone? I mean, that's that's yeah. tough to swallow. They they destroyed everything. So. He's not Surtur. How did he do that? I'm assuming through the seedlings that he has. Yeah, I know. It was kind of a joke because I think that like Ragnarok is supposed to be the only way that you take down Asgard, but I guess it's not. No, no. no. I'm I'm thinking about it, lore of like a uh, uh, they had the Triffids. <laughs> what is that? Oh, it's an old horror movie from like the 60s. Okay. <laughs> it's called The Day of the Triffids. It's a bunch of big walking plants that eat people and stuff. But uh, it, it kind of, you know, you think, uh, I, I'm thinking and envisioning a uh, Asgard being an apocalypse with all this plant life all over from these seedlings and oh, covering. Yeah. And maybe even the Rainbow Bridge. <laughs> 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 I could see it that way. <laughs> The one thing that's pretty cool is how Howard comes through with uh, with Bucky with uh, the Winter Soldier when he talks through and gum- comes through with the comms. And you mentioned it before. They kept putting in that whole how to snap him out of his trance and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. I thought it was pretty cool. Uh, the fact that Howard Stark comes through with that is amazing. Mm-hmm. So he's not just a, a figure here and I got money and I formed these, this crew with uh, with Agent Carter. I don't know 
I ever really thought Howard was all that bad. I mean, I know that Tony thinks so because that's how kids feel about their parents, especially when their parents are like really successful and busy and working and things like that. But don't Tony and, ha- and Howard have like a really nice conversation when Tony uh, goes back in game. time and in game? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I think that that was a really redeeming thing. Plus, like I said, I really like that actor from Mad Men. So he's going to get a pass. He's a good, he's a good, he's a great father is what I'm saying. <laughs> well, th- there had been a few times where Tony had come to understand his father and then resolve that within the films because there was a, a video that uh, Howard had presented or had talked directly to Tony and mm. in Tony realized that it's like, dad was just doing that for me oh okay so it's it's a lot of it is like yeah he was the absentee father he was always there but Mm -hmm. he was doing everything to provide everything for tony and tony never saw it that way until he actually got to meet you know howard actually in endgame as you mentioned yeah so that's sweet but that's all i had about the episode uh like like i said there was a lot of like the car like the amusement park uh, battle was pretty cool, mm-hmm. and I enjoyed that. Uh, definitely the end battle with uh, when Thor shows up and that whole uh, army of uh, walking dirt men. And then, of course, <laughs> they have the huge statue of uh, Ego that comes up. Uh, the big, huge Ego that shows up at the very end that they take out. I really do like this uh, this episode, and I, I look forward to uh, the rest covering the rest of them that they have. Uh, like I said, not this is not the only different version of an Avengers that we're going to get in this yep. season. So keep watching. I'm sure a lot of you are like me. Oh, they're out every day. It's I'm like, too behind right now. So I have, well, actually, the last one comes out today. So technically now I'm three behind, but I'm, 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 I'm too behind as well. I I had work yesterday. I had, uh, I've been working a lot of listeners know i do uh home theater installations for large retail chain uh i i during the holiday seasons it gets busy that's why i would in no way been able to do an episode Mm -hmm. a day now i'll leave that to tv podcast industry so derek and john could handle that easily because you know well that's what um who's watching the watchers um the podcast to come one with kirk and lenny they're they're doing um i think they're recording today on seven and eight and then they'll record in two days on nine so they're wrapping up the entire thing like in a week but as a fan of panels to pixels when are you guys covering three and four so i can listen uh three and four probably do this coming week so this episode obviously lands on new year's day so within the first week everybody yep happy happy (laughs) happy Happy new New year's Year's. but uh we'll be covering that so obviously Soon as this drops, everybody, as you're listening now, uh, I'll be putting out their uh, promo for you sending in uh, feedback for when we're covering it. So I'm not sure who's coming on. <laughs> I have to ask Steve if he's coming back to, to hang around and have fun. Maybe Rob will be on. Maybe Frank. Uh, who knows? Whoever uh, chooses to jump in and say, hey, I want to talk about this. Well, there's pretty good episodes, so I think you'll have... Some I'm sure people excited to talk about them. Yeah, yeah. It's and, and for some people, they don't like to go back to episodes after they've got. It's like oh, I wanted to do it at the time when it came out, or kind of like with a film. But you know, we do things a little later, but we still have fun, and that's Yay. the whole point. <laughs> <laughs> Plus, yeah, a lot of people. It's like when we were doing Sandman and Sandman cast. The episodes, like, you know, with Netflix, they drop everything. And just like with uh, Rima and Paik when they do uh, Stranger Things on Podcastica, when it comes out of Netflix, a lot of people just, you know, they don't want to watch it week by week. They yeah. want to do that. So, But overall, I, I really did enjoy this episode. So uh, I have no real notes other than what we discussed. Uh, yeah, actually, I was looking back at mine, and um, I don't know if, what you would call this a note or whatever, but I was watching something. I just I, I thought it was interesting. I want to share. It's about um, her name's Karen Gillian, right? Who plays Nebula? Karen yeah, Gillian. Funny. Yep. Okay. Um, that a lot of people tried out for that role initially, 
And that when she came in to play Nebula, she brought a certain cyberpunk element, which they really liked. So they hired her and incorporated that into the Nebula character. And then mm-hmm. um, another thing she was, she was talking about this character, she said that they decided that she would sound something like in between Clint Eastwood and Marilyn Monroe and real whispery voice is kind of what it was supposed to be. And hmm. I, I think that really was evident here that that's what she was playing. So sorry to stick that in so randomly right here at the end, but no, I like no, that. That's fine. That's fine. <laughs> that works out. Uh, hey, go figure too. Uh, I'm a doctor who fan. So I remembered Karen Gillan from the 11th doctor's run. She was the uh, companion for Matt Smith's doctor who, and I remember her from that. So I, who'd have thought that Amy Pond would be a, a <laughs> Nebula? Now, mind you, a big difference of Nebula in comparison to the comic version. But uh, what she brought to the role, and I just loved her. I just love her comedic timing too. So yeah. I like, like you said, that was something that was lacking within the episode. I think so. But uh, with this particular episode that we just covered for uh, about Peter Quill. Uh, I have a couple of quotes, and one of them is from Peter Quill, and he goes, and this is when he saw Thor for the thir- uh, first time, and he goes, I thought you were the lead singer of Van Halen. Oh, yeah. Van who? <laughs> <laughs> and so he was referring to David Lee Roth at the time. <laughs> so, And then one from Howard Stark saying, yeah, blame the absentee, absentee father. I do that all the time. Yeah, and, uh, I hear yeah. that all the time at home, I think. Yeah. <laughs> And then the last one I would have be Howard Stark saying, 50 years later, and Captain America is still saving my ass. <laughs> so it's a reference to uh, to Steve Rogers in this, which, uh, and that's after his talk with Bucky on the comms, because he was referencing Steve. So, but uh, I thought, I just love that. Uh, it gave me cool vibes when, it, when it, uh, all that stuff came out. But, uh, yeah, that's about it for the uh, this episode of Panels to Pixels podcast. So, uh, with that, we'll move right along. And, uh, well, well, where can listeners find you? So, Sydney, uh, obviously, you and I know each other through Podcastica. Mm-hmm. I've been a Patreon member for, I'm going to say, about eight years now. And uh, you fairly new. You jumped in. Uh, I've had Jason on here. I've had a lot of people from Podcastica on here. Uh, I actually, you know, a lot of a lot of what I like to say is this is like the stepping stone to podcasting. So a lot of people came here first <laughs> <laughs> to to get their uh, feet wet, and then uh, you you came out of the blue and and you're on the Loki cast on uh, Podcastica. Yeah. Yeah, I, I I love our cast. I love, um, yeah, the experience that I've been having doing all of this. I, I kind of started, you know, it's still super recently with <laughs> Alex doing the lives after Yellow Jackets would come on. So those are on YouTube. Yeah. But um, because of that, got to be friends with Alex. Hi, Alex. And um, then we put together the Lokiverse podcast and invited... Kirk, um, to join us, Kirk Manley and the three of us. Yeah. We just covered season one Well, we did like a rewatch and then we, you know, covered week to week season two. And then at the end of all of that, we obviously loved the season. We loved Loki's arc. Um, then we did an episode of the Marvels, uh, just to kind of wrap up what we had put together for Loki. That was the most recent thing that we yep. released. Um, actually I recorded with so Kirk and Lenny are also um, doing a what if podcast um, and I recorded with them the other day. So that should be out soon. It's on different episodes that I covered with you, Mark. And um, I didn't give any opinions to them about episodes one and two. I saved them all for here, but we covered um, <laughs> five and six over there, which are extremely excellent episodes of this season. Yeah. So um, check out our coverage um, should be out pretty soon and uh now we're just kind of talking about what we want to cover in the future you know like i love marvel and i want to see um 
us stay together and continue talking about that. But there's just not like a Marvel product that I'm aching to discuss coming up <laughs> because it's Echo. It's Echo is next. And um, yeah. it's like a shoot em up, but bang, bang kind of kind of thing. Yeah, and, um, it, yeah, it takes after what Daredevil was doing at one point, And they're just following through with that. And Hawkeye. I mean, so. I like I like Daredevil um, because he's cute, but I'm more into people <laughs> like flying around in spaceships. So I don't know. It's just not my cup of tea, as we said earlier. So I don't know. We'll have to see what's next for. Um, I'm for sure me. there's going to be something out there. Disney Plus is putting a lot more. Uh, Echo was something that they were debating whether or not to actually release, which really? is interesting. The first but, TV uh, mature thing, and they're dropping all of the episodes at once. Those are two things that. Um, yeah. I know. And then, then like Agatha, the Darkhold Diaries, I guess, is going to be out um, like super later in the year. So in the fall. So we've got a minute yeah. for that. Yeah, there's a lot of stuff to, well, for us, we like to go back in time and touch other properties. It doesn't necessarily have to be a mm-hmm. TV show. It could be a movie, things of that nature. I like to... Actually, we were supposed to record. Things got in the way with scheduling. So Rob and I were supposed to cover a movie called The Losers. And uh, that is still up to, <laughs> to being recorded, everybody. So you still have time to send in feedback. But The Losers was based on a comic book run that lasted about 28 issues. And uh, it's not your typical comic. It's about, like, uh, think of the A-Team. But with a different set of uh, people, and they're stuck in, I'm thinking Mexico, but you have Zoe Saldana in it. You got Jeffrey Dean Morgan. You got Chris Evans. Wow. Yeah. So, yeah, it came out in 2010. Didn't do very well in the the theaters or anything. It's got a terrible score. Not a cult following, but I... I actually did like it. I remember seeing it, and I mentioned it to somebody, and they were just like, wow, I got to watch that. Yeah, <laughs> and right? Like, and they said it was actually pretty good, but it didn't make any money. So, obviously, it uh, is one of those movies that just fell through the cracks. But we like to do those thing, those kind of movies. But uh, for everybody that wants to hear more of City, we like to give it a plug, and it's a good shout out to Podcastica. All you have to do is go to podcastica, uh, podcastica.com and then check out all the different podcasts that are on there. We do enjoy everybody's that are out there. Like she mentioned, you have Yellow Jackets WTF uh, when Yellow Jackets is out. She was on that uh, or did the live streams on that. And then uh, she was on. You were also you were on Loki verse. That's the name of our Loki coverage. And then, like I said this week, it was what who's watching the Watchers so is the name of the the what if coverage over there. Yeah, and then you could hear Jason on. They're doing a rewatch of The Walking Dead, so they're covering episodically from season one on again. Him and Lucy, uh, they were doing. Squid Games at one point. Yeah, there's too. Squid Games like the last season they covered, but they also were covering. I guess there's like a live action kind of game show called The Challenge. I haven't seen it, but they were I covering did. that. Yep. And then Podcast is covering Monarch. I guess I don't know if that show's over. I'm also not watching it. But if <laughs> if anyone's like like you just said, um, Mark, it's about going back in time. Um, yeah. I'm I'm listening to them cover Legion because that's what I've been watching over Christmas. Uh, so. Oh. Yeah, that, well, you need that podcast actually to get through Legion, in my opinion. <laughs> yeah, it is a huge help. Um, I think I need to catch up on the podcast because where I'm um, at in the in the episodes, I'm like, I literally have no idea what's happening. No, no, no idea what's happening. So, catch up. <laughs> so that that's where you listeners could hear it. Sydney. Like I said, check out all the other podcasts on podcastga.com. Where else can you listeners hear me? You could also hear me on Adrenaline Cinema Podcast. We haven't put out anything yet, but in a while. Uh, obviously, Losers is going to be put on there as well because it's an action film as well as a comic-based film. So I'm doing a dual podcast with that. So it's just being released on both platforms. So Panels the Pixel Podcast and Adrenaline Cinema Podcast. But... We'll be covering other films that we have on the list, so look out for those particular movies when they are advertised. You could also hear me on Fantasy Picks Movie Edition with Rob, Frank, and Adam, and we do our Football League picks of movies uh, 
of different genres, things of that nature, or how to fix or repair a movie that was terrible and didn't do well in the box office. Mm, that sounds fun. So uh, we like doing that. So you can check us out there on Fantasy Picks Movie Edition. It can be found on any podcast player of choice. And, of course, Sydney mentioned the Monarch coverage that we have. Uh, it's a dual partnership between Wilhelm and Podcastka. So I'm covering that with uh, Ben I didn't Beck. know it was you. I feel silly <laughs> trying to introduce a podcast that you're on. I just haven't watched or listened. So, yeah, I'm obviously yeah. out of the know. No, it's all right. <laughs> it's no <laughs> problem. But you can check me out there. Uh, if you're not if you're not into Godzilla, and apparently Sydney's not into it mm. as much. Uh, it's my thing. I like that stuff. But also, people that like uh, big monster movies is also Pake and Daphne on Run for Your Lives. So you mm. can check them out as well on the Podcast Network. But with that, we're going to move right along into sending some feedback because we will need some feedback for next episode because we are covering What If Season 2, Episodes 3 and 4. So to submit your feedback, all you have to do is go to our Facebook page, facebook.com forward slash panels to pixels. I'm going to be putting promotion in there, an image of what we're covering, probably taken straight from the What If episode. All you have to do is leave your comments below the image. And we'll read them on the uh, actual podcast. Uh, we also are on Instagram, which is, it's going to be the same post because they're linked. So we can be found on Instagram at Panels to Pixels Podcast. So check that out. Follow us, subscribe, all that good stuff, which is also something that you have to do on YouTube, which we could also be lit heard on as well. But you have to search for Panels to Pixels Podcast. And I say this emphatically because everybody sends me information for Josh. Josh does panels to pixels. Oh, and Josh is located in England, everybody. So I'm not Josh. I don't have the pretty hair <laughs> and, and the fancy accent. So I love Josh and his coverage. He covers a lot of cool things. So here's a cool plug for Josh on panels to pixels. But we are panels to pixels podcast. Subscribe. Like. And then uh, hit the bell to uh, follow us. Literally, it's the same podcast. It's the, the podcast just put on YouTube. So do that and uh, you could hear us there. Or in the event that I do get uh, another interview, like I've had everybody, from, a lot of people from Clerks on here <laughs> cool. uh, with the past year. So, uh, you know, we've had Comic Book Man. That, uh, we had Kevin Smith. We've had uh, a lot of people. So, uh, Weird. from, yeah, so, uh, you could check that out, but the best thing you could do for us is tell a friend. And when they ask where they could hear us, well, we could be heard on Spotify, Google play, Apple podcasts, or whatever podcast player of choice, just tell a friend and, uh, get the word out about us. Uh, if you feel the need and you don't want us, uh, to send any feedback through Facebook or Instagram, you could just email us panels to pixels one at gmail.com. That's panels spelled out two is spelled out T O pixels and the number one at gmail.com. And you could just write out a regular texted email, or if you feel fancy, <laughs> you could just record your voice and just add it in as an attachment and you become part of the podcast. We'll play it live on the actual podcast. So they're everyone's favorite <laughs> <laughs> to do, to play, to listen to. Yeah, exactly. A lot of people go out there. And as you know, Steve Brown, who is on this podcast, mm -hmm. uh, a I'm lot, a big fan of his. He does a lot of what's called live steving. So mm -hmm. give us your thoughts and opinions on your voice. It'd be uh, great to hear from you. But other than that, that is our show. I just want to thank everyone for listening. I'm Mark. I'm Sydney. Different panel, different pixels, same podcast. This was Panels to Pixels Podcast, and we'll see you on the next panel. Good Bye, day, Good night, and happy holidays. Happy, happy new year. Yep. <laughs> Bye. Bye.